this chapter, we will be introducing the concept of integration. In this lesson, we will be looking at the natural logarithm as an area. Okay, hi everybody. So today we're going to take a look at the natural logarithm as an area. And actually, we're going to find that and this is actually kind of a short lesson. The, the idea is pretty quick uh, that we want to get to. So here we're going to address the question. Find the area under y equals 1 over x from 1 to some arbitrary value, say, w. Now, I would encourage you with a lot of these area problems to draw it. Just sketch it out. So what does this look like? Okay, so let's drop our axes here. Okay, well, 1 over x is going to look something like this. I'll start over here. Because 1 over x is kind of like your the rational uh, function here. It's kind of the simplest expression of that. It's got the two asymptotes, the vertical asymptote at, y equal, at x equals 0, I should say, and horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Now, if we want to find the area under this from 1 out to some... Oops, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> from 1 out to some arbitrary value. Let's start at 1. So here we go, and then we're going to drop it off at some arbitrary value w here. So we are looking for that area right there. Now, let's think about what we, what we know about finding antiderivatives. So what we're saying here typically is we know that the derivative of the area function, okay, so we're going to come up with some sort of fun uh, function for the area from 1 out to, to w, and we know that the derivative of that should be equal to the function that we're looking for, 1 over x. All right, and we can rewrite that as x to the negative 1. And so, to take our antiderivative, we know that we increase the exponent by 1 and then divide by the new exponent. And that there's going to be some sort of arbitrary constant c that we find, and we use the... the um, end value, okay, our, our uh, oh, condition, our boundary condition. I totally lost the word boundary there for a second. We use the word, uh, the number one is a boundary condition to find our arbitrary constant. Now, I mean, I'm doing this basically just for funsies here because, hey, that doesn't work, right? That is not the way that you find the, the antiderivative of this function here. That's going to lead to an undefined value. So this is not very helpful here. This is the way a lot of these antiderivatives are found. It's, it's not by applying this method of going backwards. It's by realizing, wait a minute, I have seen that as the result of a derivative before. Okay? I know, okay, right? I know that if y is equal to the natural log of x, then y primed is equal to 1 over x. And that's where I have to go to make this work. So now I can come back here and say, okay, so if I've got my area function, the derivative of my area function, I know that that's 1 over x. i got to go backwards wait a minute, did it again, and get my area function. And so when we take the antiderivative of that, we're going to get the natural log, whoops, sorry about that, the natural log ooh, of x plus c. Okay. So there's our expression for the area. Now we've, we've run into this sort of thing before. So now what I want to do here is I'm going to, to use my boundary condition and plug that in and figure out what the c is. So I know that if I plug in 1, this will be the natural log of 1 plus c. Now, I also know something else about the area here if I evaluate it at 1. So remember here that I've got this, this value w, and I'm evaluating it some arbitrary position out here. If I pull that w in and put it over top of the 1, all I'm going to get is a line segment going right up and down. And that's going to have no area. So I know that the area at 1 should be equal to 0. I also know, okay, I also know that the area at 1, uh, sorry, the natural log of 1 is 0, which leaves me with c being equal to 0. So it turns out, therefore, okay, the area, okay, the area under y is equal to 1 over x from 1 to any arbitrary value 
w, let's say, is the natural log of w. Okay? And there we go. Now, one of the things I want to comment on bef before we, we go too much further with this is that notice, notice that the, the function here, y equals 1 over x, I get a function here and here, okay? So when x is negative, when x is positive here. I'm going to get area over here. There are parts of this function. I, I can find the area between this function and the x-axis. However, a natural log is not defined there. Okay, so one of the things that we're going to have to do here is alter the way we find the antiderivative of that 1 over x. So just a quick note here that if y primed is going to equal 1 over x, whoops, then y, we're going to let that be the absolute value of x. And we might even say plus c for my arbitrary constant here. But this is how we're going to allow this function to be used on both sides uh, of the y-axis. Okay, now let's just take a look at a couple of examples. Okay, let's take a look at it, like a really straightforward example of this. Find the area under the curve y equals 1 over x from 1 to 4. Well, that is basically exactly what this is all about. So let's draw this out again. Okay, whoops. So here we go, we've got our function going like this, down like this, and then from 1 out to 4, 1 out to 4. Okay, well this is exactly what this, uh, that pretty, uh, previous section was all about here. So I already know, okay, that the area under this curve from 1 to 4 is actually going to be equal to uh, the absolute value, sorry, the logarithm, natural logarithm of x here. So we already know that this is the case. And I'll even do throw the absolute value in here. So if I want the area out to 4, that's what I'm going to evaluate here. So this is going to be the natural logarithm of 4. And that is actually going to be approximately uh, 1.39 units squared, whatever, whatever units it is that we're using. All right, let's find the area under the curve y equals 1 over x from w to 1. So this time, what we're doing is we're taking a look at our graph here and here's the left part and then the right part but now what we've got here is we're, we're breaking this up right here we go into one this time w w is going to be between 0 and 1 okay so I want to find that area right in there Okay, now I'm going to just back this off a little bit. It was a little bit easier when I had W on the right-hand side. This is going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to start the same way I did before. I'm going to kind of pretend that I don't know what's going on here. So area prime is going to be 1 over X. Now I already know that when I, when I take the antiderivative of 1 over X, I'm going to get the natural log. And I'm going to put the absolute value of X in there plus, plus C. Now I, I want to warning here a little bit, just take a, a quick moment here. The natural log of, of uh, sorry, the natural log of the absolute value of x, I want you to understand something about that real quick. That is still not going to be defined at zero, but now I can plug negatives in. So I'm still going to have a problem though going across the, the uh, y-axis here. So if you get, ever get asked for an area on either side there, that's, that's a little bit more complicated to find and talk about. So we're not going to deal with that right now. We're just going to, um, every time we look at this, for the time being, it's just going to be on, on either side of the, of the y-axis. So, I mean, let's keep going here. So to do this, to figure out um, what it is that we're, we're missing here, what I want to do here is I'm actually going to approach this a little bit differently. Now, you've seen this before, but I'm actually going to evaluate the, the difference between the two area uh, the two area functions here at 1 and 0. I uh, sorry, 1 and w. I'm going to pretend that there's some other arbitrary endpoint over here. And so I'm going to find the area at 1 and then the area at w. And I'm going to assume that c is being defined by, by ref referencing it to some arbitrary value over here. Now, if, if that's confusing, I'm hoping that this won't be. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the area at 1 and I'm going to subtract the area at w that pattern shouldn't be confusing. You've seen that before here. 
Interesting, the previous question, I used 1 as my arbitrary endpoint, and I found out what C was. C ended up being 0, so that was convenient. But here, I'm just going to pretend that there's maybe, maybe I'll use green here, that there's some other arbitrary endpoint that I'm going to use. And when I go A at 1, it's going to come back to this point right here. W1 is going to come back to this point. So C is with reference to this arbitrary endpoint. And when I do the subtraction, it'll disappear. Now, this is going to be the natural log, the absolute value of 1 plus C, minus the natural log of the absolute value of W plus C. Okay, we've seen this before. We know that the C's are going to cancel. So this is going to end up being the natural log of 1 minus the natural log of the absolute value of w. And this is equal to 0. And so what we're getting here is this is going to end up being the, natural, the negative natural log of w. And actually, doesn't that make a little bit of sense here? That on this side right here, this is going to be the natural log of w. Now think about the way natural logs behave here. The natural log, OK, it's going to look like a logarithmic function. It's going to pass through the x-axis here at 1. It's going to be positive to the right of 1. It's going to be negative between 0 and 1. So doesn't it make sense that if, if we're going to use this, that we'd have to throw a negative in front to turn that those negative values there to a positive value? So yeah, actually, that's, that's completely consistent. And I do expect a little bit of symmetry. Notice that from, from 1 on, if I was to drop w here, and write that out, that's straight in, and shade that in. I'm going to get kind of a symmetric looking bit of area when I pull W back um, proportionally. Okay? Anyway, let's have a look at another example. Okay, so in this particular problem here, we're going to find the area under y equals a 1 over x from x equals 3 quarters to 1. Okay, so basically it's the same sort of problem that we were just looking at. So. Here's our rational function. And then out here, here's 1. And then 3 quarters. To, it's going to be somewhere in there. I know what I just drew looks closer to a half, but bear with me. Okay, 3 quarters to 1 here. So we've already just evaluated this, or figured this out here. We know that if we're going to go from 3 quarters out to 1, that is actually going to be, in this particular case here, just the negative natural log of whatever that x value is. So a of 3 quarters, the area from 3 quarters up to 1 is going to be the negative natural log of 3 quarters. And in this case, that is going to be eh, approximately uh, 0 0.29 units squared. And that's it. That's all we got to do. Okay, let's do one more example here, because uh, I don't want this—I don't want you to walk away getting confused by this and do maybe the wrong thing in a question like this. Let's find the area under the curve y equals one over x from x equals one half to x equals three. So let's again let's draw this all out. So here's our curve. Okay, and so here's one half out here to 3. Okay, so see now we've created two little little functions here. Uh, one for if the area is to the left of a half, one for if the, sorry, <laughs> left of 1, and one for the function to the right of 1 here. Let's just think of it like this here. Um, we've now got, let's pretend once again that there's some sort of arbitrary endpoint right here, okay? Uh, we'll call this A or whatever. So if we come up with some sort of arbitrary area function, okay, we know that area primed is going to equal 1 over x, and so my area is going to equal the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. We set this thing up as our area function. Now, the two functions I came up with before we're, we're based on an endpoint, really, of, of 1, okay? And you could see that in the work that we did. Uh, if you wanted to, to find the area to the right of 1, it was just the natural log of whatever your right endpoint was. If you wanted to figure out what the area was to the left of 1, it was the negative of whatever that arbitrary endpoint, the ne negative log of whatever that arbitrary endpoint was, okay? 
And that's because we were using 1, really, as our, our boundary, and, and the natural log of 1 is 0. But what if we don't even care about 1? Well, then this actually gets dealt with the exact same way that we have done in the past here. And I just want you to make sure that this is, this is clear. So if I want to get the area from there, I'm going to evaluate the area function uh, basically from 1 half to 3. So remember, this is my interval here. So this is going to be the area at 3 minus the area at 1 half. And so this is going to be the natural log of 3 plus c minus the natural log of 1 half plus c. Same arbitrary constant. That arbitrary constant is, is assuming that we're going to some other value here, a. Uh, but the c's will cancel, so I'm going to be left with the natural log of 3 minus the natural log of a half. And think about how that works here. We know that the natural log of a half is going to be negative, so when I, when I subtract that, actually I'm going to be adding that value. And when I do that, actually, I end up getting a value that's approximately 1.79 units squared. Just what, I was, what I'm concerned about is, is people will think, well, wait a minute, shouldn't I put a plus here? Because don't you think that this would be, like the area of 1 half is going to be minus, or the negative natural log of a half, and then I have to subtract that? Uh, no, no, that's... That was in a slightly different context that we did that. That was, that was if we were comparing it to 1. Here we're not comparing it to 1. But notice that I've still got inside my function here, I've still got this negative natural log of a half popping out. Okay, so it's still there. Anyways, I, I just don't want, I don't want people over, overthinking this problem and, and maybe inadvertently applying the rule incorrectly. I hope that makes sense.